Hey, what's up? This is Bo Allen, the Butter King. Super Bowl champ and seven-year NFL veteran. Today on Butter Breakdowns, we are talking about Grover Stewart. So before we get into this breakdown, in case you guys missed it, I did an interview with Grover's new D-line coach in Indianapolis, a guy that I'm very familiar with. He coached me when I was a young buck at the University of Wisconsin. Proud Badger right here. Um... That's Charlie Partridge. Had a really good time with Coach Partridge. Uh, We talked a little bit about, you know, D-line fundamentals and uh, what it's going to be like for him transitioning to the NFL after spending a lot of time as a college football coach. And Coach Partridge had incredible things to say about Grover Stewart. I've been a fan of Grover Stewart for a long time. The way he plays the game reminds me a lot of my time in Philly in Jim Schwartz's wide nine defense. Uh, so Grover Stewart is primarily a nose guard. He plays a two-eye, a very thick two-eye. We love a thick two-eye. Uh, and does a really good job um, in run defense. You know, as a, he's a great run stopper. He's a very physical player. Uh, in 2023, he had 41 tackles and five TFLs, despite only playing in 11 games. We will talk about the impact he has um, for the defense in the run game. And this is something that Coach Partridge mentioned in that interview. Please check it out. Um, but Coach P said he's very impactful. He talked about his ability to disrupt in the run game and mentioned how the run totals with him in the game Versus not in the game is very noticeable. Weeks one to six, the Colts were ninth with 3.7 yards per rush. Weeks seven to 13, without Grover Stewart, they were 31st with 4.8 yards per rush. And then weeks 14 to 18, with Big Grove back in the game, they jumped all the way up to fourth with 3.6 yards per rush. So, you know, he is very, very impactful. Coach Partridge also said that uh, Grover. You know, even though he's only known him for a brief time as, you know, a good personality, seems like a really good guy. And I think he mentioned that even though he'd only known him, you know, for a couple of weeks, it seemed like he'd known him forever. So a lot of good things to say about Grover Stewart. Um, the Colts feel very strongly about his impact on their defense, and they have re-signed him in free agency to a three-year deal with a max value of $39 million. Good shit, Grove, uh, which averages out to be about $13 million per year. And then $25.7 million in total guarantees. I'm a big fan of the Colts' defense and their defensive line. They've got some really stout interior defenders. And then the Colts also signed in free agency this year uh, a massive dude in Raekwon Davis, who's 6'7", 325 pounds. They added him from Miami. Uh, his deal was two years with $14 million max value. Uh, seven million average per year, obviously seven million guaranteed. So between DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart, and big Raekwon Davis, Charlie Partridge has Charlie Partridge has a lot of fun players to work with on his interior defensive line. Excited to see how that unfolds. Um, some quick notes on the defense that the Colts run. I've talked about the Colts defense a lot. Like I said a million times, talked about it with Coach P. Um, but basically, with Gus Bradley, they run four down gap penetrating scheme, which is fun to watch as a defensive lineman because the D lineman can really pin their ears back, get off the ball, get vertical, um, fuck things up, basically. Gus Bradley does not blitz a lot. I'm a big fan of Gus Bradley. He's actually a Minnesota guy, he's from some Broda, Minnesota. Um, and it's fun to watch his defenses play, especially his defensive linemen. So let's take it to the tape. Um, Grover Stewart. Here we go. All right, this first clip, here's Grover Stewart. Like I said, he plays that, you know, thick two eye. I, I like his alignment. Um, a couple things about his game that I really like. He's kind of blocked by the goalpost here. Uh, and this is against the Texans. He has a really nice get off. So he does a really good job of using an explosive get off. Um, and kind of, he's, he's pretty long players, like 6'4, 314, 315. Does a really good job of, he kind of has low hands because he's so focused on his get off, but does a really good job of playing thick as a two eye, playing thick into these offensive guards here. Um, and that, you know, that kind of makes it really, like, he does a really good job playing thick into them and getting knockback, which makes it really hard for these centers to combo him. And then as soon as he feels them leave, he does a really good job of uh, kind of restarting his feet and getting that vertical penetration that creates a lot of chaos, especially against zone run teams. So 
I'm going to draw this up really quick. This is going to be a lead week from the uh, Texans here. They're in 21 personnel, 21 personnel. This is first and 10, 21 personnel. Uh, means that they have two running backs, fullback, running back, and one tight end. And then lead week. So kind of what you're seeing here is like a base high arm block out of the left tackle. Uh, these two dudes are comboing up to here. And then this backer is on the back. Watch number 90 disrupt this play. It was a really nice job by him. Really good penetration for him. Getting it. He doesn't get the TFL, but he disrupts it, blows up the whole play. It has nowhere to go, and it's like a six-yard loss. So basically, what things I really like about this is like he's just getting off the ball and getting vertical. Like it, it sounds simple, it is simple, but it's not easy, right? Really good job here of like just cracking this combo block. The guard doesn't do a really good job of getting hands on him. The center, it's just too much for like his get off and power, too much for the center to handle. Keeps running his feet and gets a big, big TFL. That's a really nice play by Grover Stewart there. All right, this next play is again from. Uh, his game against the Texans, 11 personnel here. Uh, Colts are likely a nickel, but we have gun far. 11 personnel means one tight end, one running back. Gun far means the running back. Quarterback and running back are in shotgun away from the tight end, which is here. Here's Grover Stewart. Like I said, he's this thick two-eye. I'm not going to overanalyze his technique on this play. I just want you to watch how, how explosive, explosive he is with his get-off and how he's so disruptive in the backfield on this rep. Check it out. Really nice job continuing to run his feet. So, like, he kind of misses here initially. He has a little bit of a bad step, this left. And his hands are kind of low. But then watch how fast he's able to recover on a very good O-lineman in Shaq Mason. Get his hands in, like, continue to gain ground with his feet and get in on this TFL. Like, it's just, it's nice. He's a load inside. It's a good play by him. So, although he is, you know, kind of known as a nose guard, um, two-eye, Run stopper, I think, what did he have? He had 41 tackles, five TFLs. He does have some juice in the pass rush game, mostly through power, which I like. That's how I was as a rusher. Uh, Coach Partridge even mentioned something along the lines of he wants to get Grover more sacks. Me too, Coach. Me too. So here he is. This is uh, first and ten, two minute or no, two minutes left in the first quarter. Grover Stewart, just watch how explosive he is as a three technique rushing on this left guard here. Fun to watch. Boom. Look at that long arm. Really nice and a big hit on Lamar Jackson. Things I like about this is like not overcomplicating his rush. He knows that he's a power guy. He's got a great explosive get off. Really nice get off here. Watch him just get his hands inside this guard, lock him out, run behind this long arm, pry this outside hip open here. Like, oh, lineman in this ch in this situation has no chance. Continuing to run his feet and then getting a big hit on Lamar Jackson. I, I like him as a rusher as well. Okay, so here's a clip of Grover Stewart as a two-eye against the Rams. Uh, you know, a lot of time when you get these, like, wide nine defenses – Teams like to try to run to the open side. This is the open side because there's no tight end there. This is the closed side because that's where the tight end is. Um, and so you'll see we called this press open when I was in um, Tampa. Stretch to the open side, whatever. A lot of times what you see is this combo here and then try to overtake with the center. But Grover does such a good job of getting vertical with his get off. Sometimes he can get a little twisted up in the run game and doesn't stay super square, but he does a really good job of feeling when the, you know, the combo man, the guard in this case, leaves, restarts his feet, and can create a lot of havoc in the backfield. So watch this play. Like, this is what I'm talking about. So he's just getting vertical. The guard is gone. Watch him restart his feet and impact this play. It's really nice. He makes it look really easy, and I promise you, it is not. So it was a really good job to the open side because there's a lot of space. Like this end is kind of running up the field. Not a great edge for him. But it's a really good job of him just getting off the ball, getting vertical, restarting his feet when the combo man, the combo block leaves, and making a big tackle. Okay, on butter breakdowns, I love showing wham traps. Show that a lot. Here's Grover Stewart right here. Anytime you see like a guy like on the ball and a guy that's a tight end, 86 off the ball, 
as a D, as an interior defensive lineman, you need to have your, your, you know, your, you need to be on high alert. Okay. And then the other thing too is anytime you, it's really hard to see this, but you can see it on tape. When this guy gets his little head start here, just be ready. Like they're doing that for a reason. So a lot of times they're doing that because they want to run a wham trap. I watched a lot of tape of Gus Bradley's defense. And because these dudes are so vertical, teams like running these whams and these traps against them because it can create some vertical seams in the defense and split the defense. Just watch this play. I want you to key in on this tight end here. Look at him down in his stance. He's staring back this way. This is not a fun assignment for this dude. Just watch the tight end here. Boom! <laughs> I had to throw that one in here. Like This dude has got to come all the way across here and go block this guy. Who gives up like he gives up like a hundred pounds to him? I feel like and watch him just get absolutely man dogged. Boom! <laughs> like Grover Stewart doesn't even see this guy coming. He gets off, gets vertical, feels all this space. He's like, when you're a D lineman and this happened, like the you know the Red Seas part a little bit, you know like something's fucking up, okay? But Grover Stewart like just fucking runs his tight end right over. Now he doesn't necessarily make that play, but I mean he 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 makes a tackle. Not in the backfield, but he blows up the tight end. It just shows like what a physical specimen he is. Fun to watch. I had it here. Let's watch that one more time. Here, this is from the back, the back view here. It's so great. Watch this tight end right here. Boom! Oh god, I love that. Okay, moving on. This is the last play um, against. The Falcons, like I said, Gus Bradley, I think he's like one of the, he's in the bottom two for um, how often he blitzes. He really doesn't blitz that much. Want to show a blitz here, though, uh, situational here. It's second and four. They're going to bring a corner from the outside. This dude spiking, cross face here, and then hammer, hammer here. This is a really athletic play by Grover Stewart here. A couple things I want to point out. Pre-snap, um, I think he knows that this guard is pulling based on his stance. A lot of times guards will be a little further off the ball. Like you can kind of see he's got this hand back a little bit. Uh, his stance to me, an experienced nose guard looks, this stance looks a lot different than this. So I think that Grover Stewart kind of suspects that his guard will be pulling and the center will be, will be blocking back. So just watch how he does such a good job crossing the center's face here. I really like uh, his first step, you know, his, his, Left foot is kind of blocked by his hand that's down in his stance here, but really good job here on this uh, angle footwork. And then watch his I'll, – I'll show you in a sec, but just fucking watch Grover Stewart right here. This is a great rep. Nice cross face. And then great finish. Watch the little, little man Sally at the end here. Little boy. So let me just run that back. We'll watch it from the uh, defensive back side. A couple things I really like here. Look at this angle footwork. Really nice. And he knows the center is coming to block back on him just because of his pre-snap keys. I like this violent arm over right here from Grover Stewart. And then the hardest thing is once you clear this guy and you're past him, he does a really good job of getting in the hip pocket of the pulling guard. And then just understanding that at this point, like you've crossed center's face, you're behind the puller here. Get vertical and make that TFL. And that's exactly what Grover Stewart does here. So really, really nice rep from him. So overall, I'm a big fan of Grover Stewart. I've loved the way he plays for a long time. He's very physical. He's tough uh, to deal with with that thick two eye, you know, and that's why he's getting paid $13 million a year for the Colts. Really like watching Gus Bradley's defense. Again, it reminds me a lot of the defense I played in uh, with Jim Schwartz, that wide nine where, you know, when you're a two eye or a three technique, you can really just get vertical and, uh, and get off the ball. So Definitely a difference maker on the field, uh, especially in the run game for Grover Stewart. Like I said, weeks one to six, when he is in the game, 3.7 yards per rush and 3.6 yards per rush weeks 14 to 18 when he's in the game versus weeks seven to 13 when he was serving that six-game suspension and teams averaged 4.8 yards per rush. So numbers don't lie, guys. Grover Stewart's a really good player, and he's really impactful in that defense. Thank you for tuning in for another Butter Breakdown. If you want to hear what Grover Stewart's new defensive line coach, Charlie Partridge, has to say about his game, check out the interview I did with Coach P. Like I said, he's a great guy. Appreciate you guys. Like, comment, subscribe.
Let me know what other buttery content you want from me.